right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live here on our second episode of the Studs Podcast. Now, let me start by telling you, we did our first one today as a solo act with myself. This is Mike. And what I said before is, you know, hopefully in six months, maybe a month, maybe two years from now, you guys will all be looking back and being like, wow, these guys stunk in the beginning. Or you'll be saying, wow, it wasn't actually that bad. They have potential. Because we, uh, our plan is to be as big as we possibly can, but to have fun, uh, talking sports and a whole bunch of other things. So that's enough of me. We finally get to do it with our second member. Our third member, Louie, will hopefully be joining in uh, soon, maybe today or tomorrow. But our goal is to talk sports, music, uh, 2K, NBA, everything, you know, covering uh, New England sports, everything we can do and go as viral as we possibly can. So with that being said, it's time to introduce uh our, our second member of our studs podcast uh his name is kef and he has a uh, youtube professional youtube experience he is well known for his uh Ket and rick youtube channel uh that was viral a couple of years back with uh, an astonishing 50 subscribers um and they did 2k gameplay and we're gonna get that back here too but anyway let's uh let's get to kef all right, guys. Hey, uh, how's it going? My name is Keith, uh, better known as Kath. And uh, I wouldn't say necessarily, you know, that uh, I was well known for uh, all that YouTube stuff that we did. You know, we probably had about, you know, it was a failed YouTube channel with like 30 subscribers. And I think that uh, you probably had uh, a good like 90 percent of all the views on our on our uh, three videos that we made successfully, you know. And uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh so yeah, but you know, I'm happy to happy to be a part of Studs podcast. You know, it's something that um, I've been looking forward to doing. You know, for for a while. And uh, you know, what what better way to do it with, than with your best buddy? You know what I mean? All right. No, I, so, I don't know what you mean. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully we'll find we'll find out. So, you know, soon enough. All right. So uh, let's get right into the thick of it. What what uh what, what are we uh, talking about today? What do you what's on the agenda? Well, I was kind of a test podcast earlier. I talked about Tom Brady and. Because that's the biggest, other than the coronavirus, that's, yeah. uh, that's given us the time to actually do this, which is awesome. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, uh, Tom Brady, you know, he's been with the Patriots for 20 for years. 20 years, yeah, it's crazy, you know? You know I grew up watching him, and now he's gone. So basically, yeah. you know, the last podcast I just talked about, why I felt it benefited both. If it benefited the Patriots and it benefited him to not be a Patriot anymore. So you mm. know, that's, that's really it. I mean, what are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are my thoughts are this. Obviously, you know, I'm sad to see him go. He was a good part of, you know, my childhood and my adulthood for that matter, you know. You know, I'm 24, turning 25, so he came into the league, you know, 2000. I was five years old when he first joined the Patriots, so, you know, I don't really remember him w without the team, you know what I mean? They go they go together, you know, really good nice, yep. like peanut butter and jelly, you know. Yep. But, you know, I can definitely see why – you know, he wants to leave. He's at the tail end of his career. I think he's probably got, you know, like maybe two or two or three solid years left, you know. But for for his reasons for leaving, I'd probably say that he left because, you know, you probably already mentioned this, you know, for the money reasons. You know, obviously during his time in New England, he had to uh, take massive pay cuts in order for people, you know, to uh, to be incorporated into the Patriots, you know, to get good players, you know. In order to like sustain that, he needs to take pay cuts. But at the tail end of his career, you know how I see it is that he wants to go out, retire with a lot of money, and to do that, he needs to go elsewhere because they, I think that they were, uh, yeah, my clock's going off, my bad. <laughs> but yeah, I think that you know. It's feeding time. Yeah, it's feeding time. Yeah, I think that Brady, you know, he needed to go somewhere else to get the money that he wanted because he wasn't going to be getting it in New England, you know. But. You know, I do think uh, it's going to be interesting, you know, to see the Patriots, you know, in rebuild mode, you know. They've been a pretty solid team, you know, for a long, long time. And, you know, it's been a while since, uh, obviously, yeah, since they've been uh, they've been like this, you know. They're missing a lot of key players. Well, you, bring up, you bring up a good point because I am more excited about this year coming up than I've been for, like, the past, like, three years because Tom Brady's not the quarterback anymore. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting. To, yeah, we finally get to see Belichick have a full season without him you know, yeah i want to see what he does it's going to be interesting to see you know absolutely what bill belichick does you know yeah i mean he's known for taking you know nobodies and making them into somebodies but can you know can he do it at this level you know what i mean he's always mm -hmm. had brady 
at that like center role position, you know, as like the team leader, but now he doesn't have that. So can he incorporate someone new, you know, whether it be, you know, a draft pick or someone who's already in the system, like a can like a Cam Newton, you know what I mean? Can he make them fit, you know, make it work? I honestly be surprised or be happy if we can get the ten wins this season, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I don't my know. only my only thing with Cam Newton is it's like I don't know. I'm, I I yeah, I like Cam Newton. I, I would love to see him here, but I don't know. I just feel like they should go the young route. I don't know. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I feel like I'd rather see Stidham and them. Unless it was Garoppolo, that's not. Him. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, the the uh, 49ers are going to be keeping Jimmy G around for as long as they can. You know what I mean? But yeah, it doesn't have to necessarily be though. Uh, even Cam Newton, it could be anybody. You know. It could, uh, I was going to say Phil, the Phillip Rivers, but he's already taken by the Colts. But I, Yuck. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want I don't want him at all. But I was just saying, you know, could Bill Belichick take anybody, you know, the, the run of the mill, you know, the aging quarterback or someone new, yeah, and get him to work in the system, which is going to be interesting. It's, I'm, I'm excited to see that, what's going to happen, but yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I think it definitely benefits them because – you know, like like you said and I said earlier, them being able to rebuild now instead of Brady coming back for two more years, three more years tops. And now here's the other point. I feel if as though I, I think I said it the other day. If if Belichick knew Brady was coming back, I think he would have had an off season like like 2007, where they brought in Randy Moss, where they brought in Wes Welker. Right, I think yeah. they would have. I think they would have been in more on Stefan Diggs. Yeah. Uh, Stefan Digg, and they would have tried to get DeAndre Hopkins. I think he would have went out and done that, but I think he knew the writing was on the wall. Yeah. And I don't think it was the baddest choice. I don't, because then if you give up those picks for Diggs, which uh, do you remember how many picks? I think they got like three picks for, for I think Diggs. it was like four picks. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Something crazy. Yeah. Like, like good for Buffalo. Like, fine. Yeah. Like, did they need that kind of move? The Patriots, you know, I mean, yeah, they did for Brady, but. Right. Um, but imagine the Patriots giving up a first round pick, a third yeah. round pick, a fourth round pick, and then another first or second round pick in a year from now. That's going to hold them back so long from developing uh, and and rebuilding, and it's just going to make it worse by them loading up for another chance for for Tom Brady to get another Super Bowl ring. And I think they could have won with Brady again, possibly, yeah. but they had to reload the roster. Oh, and they had to get, yeah. They had to give up on the future to do that. Absolutely. I think, like, what was it, the average age on the roster for the Patriots was, like, they're all over 30, you know? We don't got any, like, young mm-hmm. talent that, that are that's in, like, in the roster, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy to think about. I mean, you got the McCourty twins, you know, you know, they're solid team, team members, you know? They've been on the team for a while, you know, at least one of them has, but, I mean, they're in their 30s. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the team is in their 30s, you know what I mean? And, you know... You don't see that many, you know, players who are in their 30s sustain high performance for a long time. You know what I mean? In their 30s, you know, you probably get to like, what, 34, 35, and then you hit the cliff. You drop off, you know? Happens to everybody. You know, some people are better, you know, you might get the occasional, like, someone like Edelman who can outlast, you know, play a little longer into their 30s. But generally, they all drop off within that 30, you know, age range. I think Edelman's, I think Edelman's done. I think Edelman's done, too. I think he's toast. Yeah. I mean, he's not toast, but yeah, I don't think he's. Yeah, definitely, he's, he's on the he's, tail end right now. He's been taking so much of a beating. Yeah. It's like, uh, well, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you think back. I mean, uh, the Bel- Belichick. Looks tried like to we get... lost a little connection. Um, we'll keep going. You know, I just think with Edelman. Yeah. He is taking so much of a beating, um, and the guy is always he is always injured. But I love him. He's one of the most reliable wide receivers I've ever seen. Um, and that brings up another good point is that Belichick uh, has um, – uh, I'm sorry, not Belichick, but Brady. Brady has has done so bad, much better with wide receivers like Julian Edelman, like Deion Branch, like Troy Brown, yeah. than, than with superstar receivers, other than Randy Moss. Obviously, Randy Moss was unbelievable. Right. But um, I think that connection could have been there too with Antonio Brown. Um, yeah. But it's those slot guys. It's those guys that can catch in the slot, the fast, so he can. Get right. All right, we're back. We lost a lost a little connection, um, but we were talking about Julian Edelman um, and how over thirty years old, like yeah, he had a great season. But I think he's toast. I mean, what do you think? 
I mean, yeah, I definitely think that he's on the tail end of what, you know his career. I mean, like you said, yeah, he has been great. You know, he's been Brady's top receiver. And this past year, especially, you see it. I mean, he was probably, you know, if not one, if not the best, the only receiver who was consistent this past year who could catch the ball, who could make yards after the catch. And everyone else knew it, too. You know, on the opposing team, they knew on the scouting report that he was the best, you know. So when he got the ball, he got popped. All the time, consistently. You know what I mean? I mean, I, don't think, I forget what they said. It was his shoulder and it was his knee that were, like, ripped up bad. And I, I think um, I heard a report or someone say, like, it's, like, amazing how he's playing because you don't even know, like, how bad the injury is. He's someone, like, described the injuries that he had were, that were, like, gruesome. You know what I mean? But he, like, oh, played yeah. through them. Brutal, mm-hmm. you know? He can't, he can't keep that up for much longer. You know what I mean? He, he needs help, you know? He can't be the only person. If he wants to keep playing at the level that he's at, he can't be the only person that's, uh, you know, doing stuff like that. It's people on the roster need to step up. You know what you I gotta, mean? You got to think, too. Remember when he got busted for the PEDs? Yeah, that's also true. He yeah, can't he got, take those anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he can't take those anymore. But still, like, other people on the roster need to step up. I would like to see more from Nikhil Harry, definitely. I think he's got potential, you know. Obviously, he wasn't utilized as much this past season. I'd like to see more from him. And, you know, I also like to see more from people like Sanu, people who are already, you know, tested, trusted, and proven. They need to, you know, do their part as well. I know there's a big, the big, uh, uh, what was it, the big issue last year was separation, you know, separation from a defender. I mean, at the NFL, you know, you have to, you have to get separation. You know what I mean? It's a big, it's a big crucial thing. And we weren't getting that last year. So those guys on the roster, other than Edelman, need to step up and do their part in order to make a spot, you know what? to help contribute to the team's offense because we had none last year, little to none. Well, well, that brings up the next point, I think, with – with I, I think one of the issue was Brady's connection with the younger guys. Yeah. You know, like, I like Myers. Um, Harry, I, I, fe- I felt there was an okay connection, at, at, like, especially in that, that Kansas City game. And uh, I felt the connection was a little bit better. But I think – one of the benefits you'll see is, especially with Stidham, is I think you're going to have a – I mean, he has no option. The willingness to connect with the younger receivers, I don't think that was there with, with Brady. Brady, I think, was just miserable the whole entire year. He wanted yeah. nothing to do with those the young guys. Um, and that brings up another interesting point because in Tampa Bay, if he ever signs here, because he still hasn't signed yet, <laughs> but I think – you're. Is he going to be willing or is, you know, someone like Mike Evans going to be willing to um, play the style that Brady wants him to play? He's not going to have Jameis Winston dropping dimes to him all the way 50 yards every right. every other play. He's going to have to go short. I mean, Godwin does that. Godwin's amazing at that. I, I, Godwin's yeah. awesome. But he's still got a good offense. But is someone like Mike Evans going to be willing to adjust his play style? Um and is the team going to be willing to adjust to Brady being ultra competitive? Is mm-hmm. the coach going to be willing? Like, there's very well chance that Tampa Bay. I mean, I think Tampa Bay will be fine, but they might get off to a slow start. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe, right. maybe Brady's willing. Brady has to be at OTAs. He has to be willing to put the work in um, with with the receivers, um, unlike he's been doing with the Patriots the past couple of years. Right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, Brady's in a whole new system. You know, he's not what he's used to, and not in that environment that he's been in for 20 years. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, who adjusts to who, and what adjustments are made. You know, entirely. You know, is Brady going to have to adjust? It. You know, obviously he is. You know, it's a whole new environment for him. He's got to. He's got to get to know his new receivers very well. Mike Evans and you know Chris Godwin. It's going to be interesting to see. You know, if they can make that connection for this season and see how far they can go. You know what I mean? Because Brady, you know, as you said, Brady is having a hard, harder time getting the ball downfield. You know, he's not taking as many shots downfield. He does occasionally, but not as much as he's done in the past. He's much, like you said, accustomed to throwing the ball like maybe like 10, 10 yards down the field, you know, those short those short passes. He's not used to doing those long bombs that, uh, that Mike Evans is used to. So it'll be interesting to see how that all, like, compares, you know, how that all works out later on. Absolutely. Absolutely, no, I, I agree with you. But um, well, I think that's gonna wrap it up here. We're gonna, uh, I think we're gonna save some stuff for uh, when our third and final team member, um, Louis, you know, yeah. uh, you'll meet him hopefully next time. Gets his yeah. stuff ready to go, and uh, 
we'll get him on and we'll get his thoughts too. We got a lot of good podcasts coming up, you know. Uh, we're going to talk about who's the next face of uh, Boston sports. We're going yep. to also do some music stuff as well, you know. Uh, hopefully next time we're on, you're going to see my uh, record wall as a DJ and we'll talk some, uh, mm-hmm. some music as well. But we got a lot of fun stuff going up. Um, and uh, also maybe we'll get some uh, 2K basketball gameplay oh absolutely the worst players in 2k oh yeah we're pretty bad i mean it, we, we, i mean we do have our, our our bright spots you know where we uh we're after like a uh, like a six to eight game losing streak yeah after a six to eight game losing streak we might I win suck. one game yeah but uh yeah i mean i it's all about having fun while you play and most of the time i mean i do like playing but you know i get very competitive so yeah it's it's tough when you take that many losses but it is what it is you know you just got to keep playing Mm-hmm. All right. Any final thoughts before we uh, end it? You know, your thoughts on the channel? Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, getting this channel going. You know, obviously, like you said before, I've had some experience on YouTube before, but you know, not a whole, not a whole lot. You know, we made three videos, three, <laughs> three videos, but you six. know, six videos, whatever, how many it was, but that was a while ago. That they were three, amazing. That was like three years ago. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, getting back into this. You know, I'm very passionate about uh, sports. You know. All Boston sports, especially, and uh, yeah, I can, uh, can do, do some music too, do some music too if needed. But yeah, looking forward to it, you know. So uh, stay tuned for what's what's uh, what's about to come. It's all good stuff. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, this is it for the uh, Studs podcast, and uh, we'll be uh, uploading this to YouTube. Um, if you want to, you can like, comment, subscribe. If you thought it was uh, good, and like I said, hopefully six months to maybe. 10 years from now, we'll be looking back at this first video and be like, wow, we came a long way and we're really good. Yeah, so, well, back, uh, anyway. back when we get uh, – by then, we'll have 10 subscribers. You know what I mean? In yeah, by then, <laughs> yeah, by then, by then we'll have 10. So, uh, But yeah. anyway, this is Mike, and uh, we, we have uh, Kef. And on the count of three, we're going to be out. Ready? We're going to studs out. One, two, three. Studs, studs out. out. Have a good one, everyone. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.